In this video, I will walk you through free response question number four from the 2002 AP Calculus exam. The graph of the function f shown above consists of two line segments. Let g be the function given by the integral from 0 to x of f at t dt. For part a, we are asked to evaluate g, g prime, and g double prime at negative 1. Let's start with g at negative 1. This means we will simply substitute negative 1 for x in this expression. So we will have the integral from 0 to negative 1 of f at t dt. Notice that the limits of integration were backwards compared to what we're used to. Normally, we like to have the limits from least to greatest, but here we have from 0 to negative 1, so that's backwards. We can switch the limits of integration and put them in the proper order from negative 1 to 0, as long as we remember that that will cause the sign to change. So it will now be the opposite of what, whatever it was. We know that the integral from negative 1 to 0 will be the area under the curve from negative 1 to 0. In other words, it will be the area of this triangle. And we know the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So this area will be 1 half. Uh, the base is 1. And the height is 3. So 1 half 1 times 3. And don't forget the negative sign. But this simplifies to negative 3 over 2. So that's 1 down and 2 to go. Next, we need to find g prime at negative 1. To find the derivative of an integral defined function, we use the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which has a general form and a common case. For this problem, we will use the common case, which is where we have a constant for the lower limit of integration and simply x for the upper limit. According to the common case, the derivative will simply be f of x. In other words, we replace the placeholder variable t with the real variable x. So here we have this integral defined function g. If we want to find g prime, it will simply be f of x. That means g prime at negative 1 will just be f at negative 1. So let's take a look at the graph. This is the graph of f. If I go over to negative 1, I see that the value of the function is right here. It is 0. 2 down, 1 to go. Now we just have to evaluate g double prime at negative 1. We just saw that according to the common case of the second fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative of an integral defined function like this will just be f of x. Now we need to find the second derivative, so g double prime will just be the derivative of what you see. In other words, g double prime will be the derivative of f of x. Specifically, we need to find g double prime at negative 1. So this will be f prime at negative 1. But f prime is just the slope, the slope of this function. The slope of this function at negative 1, uh, let's see, it's 3. I can see that the rise over run. It's going up 3 over 1. So the slope is 3. That means that g double prime at negative 1 is equal to 3. Part b. For what values of x in the open interval from negative 2 to 2 is g increasing? Explain your reasoning. Here is a relationship that we learned back in first semester g of x will be increasing where g prime is positive. 
In part a, we found that g prime will equal f of x. Therefore, g of x will be increasing where f of x is positive. Glancing at the graph of f, we see that f is positive in this part of the graph. In other words, f is positive between negative 1 and positive 1. In summary, g of x is increasing on the interval from negative 1 to positive 1 because g prime, which equals f of x, is positive on this interval. Part C. For what values of x in the open interval from negative 2 to 2 is the graph of g concave down? Explain your reasoning. And here is function g. Here is the bit of notes on which we usually rely when we talk about concavity. g of x is concave down, where g double prime is negative. The challenge for us is that since we are given the graph of f, all of our justifications have to be based on f. By the second fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that g prime of x is equal to f of x. So is there a way that we can rewrite this statement using g prime instead of g double prime? In first semester, we learned the graphical relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime. So if g double prime is negative, that means g prime is decreasing. So instead of saying that g of x is concave down where g double prime is negative, we can say g of x is concave down where g prime is decreasing. Let's take one more step because we have to link this directly to the graph of f. This is easy because we know that g prime of x equals f of x. So instead of just saying that g of x is concave down where g prime is decreasing, we will just squeeze in where g prime, which equals f of x, is decreasing. Now we have linked it directly back to the graph we are given. We can see that f of x is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 2. So we say g of x is concave down on the interval from 0 to 2 because g prime of x, which equals f of x, is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 2. Part D. On the axes provided, sketch the graph of g on the closed interval from negative 2 to positive 2. Let's make an old school table of values, starting with an x value of negative 2. If we want to evaluate g at negative 2, we need to plug in 2 for x. So that would give us g, well, let me say g at negative 2 is equal to the integral from 0 to negative 2 of f at t dt. But I don't like this because it is backwards. We would rather have the limits of integration going from least to greatest. So let's flip this around and make it negative. So now we have this integral but we know that this integral represents the area between the curve and the x-axis between negative 2 and 0. But the area between the curve and the x-axis from negative 2 to 0 consists of two regions. I have this blue triangle and the yellow triangle. An area below the x-axis is considered a negative area and the area above the x-axis will be positive. So the net area from negative 2 to 0 will be the sum of these two areas. Now I could uh, calculate the area of this triangle using 1 half base times height, and I could figure out that this area was negative 3 over 2. I could do the same thing for the yellow triangle and figure out that this area is positive 3 over 2. But I don't need to know the exact value. I can tell that the negative triangle and the positive triangle have the same size. They have the same magnitude, but they are opposite in sign. So when I add up the two areas, 
all right, because I need the total area between negative 2 and 0. These will cancel each other out, and I will get 0. So we have our first point at negative 2 comma 0. Now let's do an x value of negative 1. g at negative 1 will equal the integral from 0 to negative 1 of f at t dt. Again, this is backwards from what I want, so let's flip it around and make it negative. So g at negative 1 will equal the opposite of the integral from negative 1 to 0 of f at t dt. But this integral represents the area between the x-axis and the curve from negative 1 to 0. In other words, the area of this yellow triangle. So remember, this triangle, uh, the, we can calculate the area by doing 1 half base times height. So this is 1 half, 1 times 3. So therefore, this area is 3 over 2. That's the value of the integral without the negative sign that we pulled out front. So g at negative 1 will actually equal negative 3 over 2. So we have our second point, negative 1 comma negative 3 over 2. I think I'll put negative 1.5. Let's do the x value of 0 now. Plugging in 0 for x, we get that g at 0 will equal the integral from 0 to 0 of f at t dt. But this is silly. Uh, we cannot calculate the area from 0 to 0. It's the same point. There is no area there. So whenever the limits of integration are exactly the same constant, we know that the area, the uh, value of the integral, will be 0. So we have 0 comma 0 for the third point. Now let's do an x value of positive 1. g at 1, putting in a 1 right here, so I will have the integral from 0 to 1 of f at t dt. This integral is already in the right order, and it represents the area between the curve and the x-axis from 0 to 1. In other words, the area of this yellow triangle right here. This has the same area as the triangle immediately to the left that we just calculated to be 1.5. So this will also be 1.5. So we have our next point, 1 comma 1.5. Now let's evaluate g at an x value of 2. So g at 2 plug in into right there, we will have the integral from 0 to 2 of f at t dt. So this will be the area between the curve and the x-axis from 0 to 2. So that's from 0 to 2 is right here. So I need to add in another triangle. So the net area from 0 to 2 will be the sum of these two areas. But once again, we can tell that these two triangles have the same area, the same magnitude. However, the yellow triangle is considered to be a positive area because it is above the x-axis, while the blue triangle has a negative area because it is below the x-axis. So when we add them together, they cancel each other out and make 0. So we have our final point, 2 comma 0. So let's plot these points on the graph and see what we've got. So here's how it looks so far. Now we just draw a smooth curve through these points to get the final answer. Kabam! This is the sketch of g on the closed interval from negative 2 to positive 2.